and welcome to my YouTube channel and my show Grub and Rub with King Tonto. I know that you all know me, but I will introduce myself to you in a moment. But first of all, I am super duper excited to take you on a journey of artful and deliciously beautifully plated meals while I hold awesome discussion with various guests from various walks of life and various parts of the world. For those of you who do not know me, I am King Tonto. They, I said what I said, King. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm a mom. I am a humanitarian. I am a foodie. I love food so much. A lover of God and now a YouTuber. Thank you very much for joining me on my YouTube channel and my show, Grub and Bob with King Tonto. Today's episode is a very interesting one. We will be talking about something that everybody loves to participate in, but nobody wants to talk about. Yeah, you heard me. Sex. <laughs> so we will be talking about sex mm -hmm. in a moment i will be introducing my guest but we will be talking about so much about sex i mean why do we want it why do we crave it why does our body just long for it and our soul just wants to melt when we have it but yes we still cannot talk about it why today my guest is miriam Talmon. I hope I got her name right because, I mean, it sounds like Salmon. I like it, but Talmon, yes. And she is a sex therapist. She helps people, especially women, channel their inner sexual energy in the right way. Oh my God. I can't imagine food and sex. Isn't that all we are? all about food and sex we're having good food and we're talking about one of the most interesting if not the most interesting interesting topic on earth yes so my guest today mariam Saum taumon is also an educator and has been an educator for the past 15 years wow and recently joined from her inner desires to help women she dabbled into being an advocate for women's sexual health brings me back to again why she is a sex therapist right and against any form of domestic violence so she stands in as an advocate for women's sexual health and also any domestic violence form of <laughs> you understand what i'm saying <laughs> this, this episode is gonna be fun and we are gonna be talking about all of this while we are eating this sumptuous meal and today meal is something that is very close to home because this meal is from the streets of where i come from patakot so this is a patakot meal it's called bole and fish bole so bole and bole means fish plantain yam and everything roasted you know and it has this amazing come closer please come closer amazing sauce they have here so it's just you get your plantain you dip in and you have your fish we have different kinds of fish we have the tilapia we have the catfish which is this so big so 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 big guys so big oh my god and we have your the normal um lady fish and we have titus fish all so pretty while wow, we're having this amazing discussion teaching you about sex do not go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mariam Talmon. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Mariam. Oh, this looks great. Amazing, right? Yes. <laughs> Can't I'm, wait. I hope you're a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> you will see. Wow, another foodie, which is amazing. So, on today's episode, like I told you, we will be talking about sex. I mean, S E X. 
sex. Yes, you, you heard me right, sex. And um, we'll be doing that while we're munching on this deliciously plated, amazing bullet delicacy. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. <laughs> but yes, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be munching on this while we talk. So, Miss Miriam, this is an eating show. Okay. So, <laughs> it's, it's a speck of us to eat. I appreciate the food while we learn. I, for one, I do not know about sex. I don't know so much about sex. I mean, I do know that, you know, it comes with friction, it comes with passion sometimes, sometimes it just comes with a question in your head. But I just know, I just know the act of sex, but the nitty gritty of sex, I do not know. But today I will want to learn a lot about you. So, um, please, do me the honors of serving yourself while I do serve myself. Ooh. While I show my questions, but I do love to do something, okay, okay, on the show. Before I take the first bite, I'm not very selfish. I give my viewers, so okay, yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna do this for my viewers. You know, I love you so much. You have the first bite, okay? Have the first bite. Let me come, come closer, come closer. Let me give it to you. So you have the first bite, viewers. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to serve myself, so you can serve yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. you start. This looks absolutely amazing. I know, amazing. right? And it's been so long I had bully and fish. Okay, so Miss Miriam, tell me, why? Why sex therapy? I have actually washed my hands. We did wash our hands very well, so yes. So why sex therapy? Um, sex therapy for me started because there was a need. Okay. There was a need. Uh, people were always asking questions. Please, go ahead. People were asking questions. People did not know answers. People didn't, were not even sure what they were doing. Because when I first started, I, I did a survey. I just started asking people, what do you know about sex? How do you know you're good at it? How do you know you are... Uh, it was for you. How do you know you get orgasms? And I got, I was shocked. I asked the questions from all sorts of people, ranging from students to married women to pastors, different people. Give, let me give you an example. A pastor's wife told me how, oh, she always has a flood of questions. Women are always coming to her and asking her, and sometimes she doesn't even have answers. I said, okay. Then she asked a question that intrigued me. She was like, yes, she does the best she can, but who would she go to when she has her own questions? Mm. And I was shocked because I was thinking, yeah, you should know what to do. But she said, a lot of women are just walking well, around. Sex is not a spiritual thing, so I mean, they're just walking not around like, like they're headless passes. chicken. They don't know what is going on. Somebody said, please, please, please come and tell me. I'm not even sure what I'm doing. It's from books. It's, she says, oh, from movies, for what my friends tell me, from what I've seen. Oh, yes. Mm. Don't worry, I'll get into mm -hmm. this. What I've seen. So, I said, okay. I started doing my research. I decided to go and start studying. Of course, first you have to start with family counseling. You have to start with family counseling. Oh, this is amazing. Very amazing. Then... People started drawing to me to ask questions that I thought, you should know. These are general questions you should know. So from that, I started a group of women that come together and ask questions. And some of them are shy. Some of them come as individuals. Some of them come as individuals to ask questions. So what do I do? How do I do it? Oh, I'm having issues. I'm having pain. I'm having this. I'm like, Go and see a doctor, go on. So the group got bigger and bigger and bigger, and that was when I said, oh, I have to do this. Nobody wow. wants to talk about it, nobody wants to say anything, wow. so I have to do this, yeah. That's, That's amazing. That's amazing. It also brings me to my next question. You know how we live in a society where everybody's so judgmental? Yep. And um, they have an opinion, even if it's something that it's not their business. Just normally, you do know the side we live in, especially Africa. And once they hear sex, sex alone is like a problem. Not talking more of somebody who is teaching people how to have sex. It's taboo. You know, yes, they, yes, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a taboo mm. thing placed on it. It's taboo. Mm. Hey. What's saying? How do you face the stigma 
associated with sex therapy? A lot of a lot of time, yes. When ex, ex, especially when you say, "Oh, I'm a sex therapist and counselor," the first thing people look at you like, "Hmm." I get funny questions. I get funny stares. But I tell people, get your mind out of the gutter. Sex is not about being dirty. It's something you need to know. Everybody needs to know because mm -hmm. people have sex. It's God created sex. Yeah. So why are we shy about it? We don't even talk about it. Nobody discusses it. So when people, I just school them right. I educate them. I just tell them what they need to know. It's not about, because yes, I've had clients I've worked with that their husbands call me and like, eh, so you think we can see later and you know, they try to make you run shit dirty or something. But I just school them, I educate them. It's not about dirtiness, it's not about, it's about learning a skill, okay. knowing about something you need so to So sex is a skill? Yeah. Oh wow. You have to learn it. Sex is a skill? Oh wow. Did anybody teach you? Um, no. Your mother won't sit yeah, you down and teach true. you? Yeah. Nobody. I, I think nature taught me. Then, of course, friends. You had conversations. Mm -hmm. Maybe read here and there. You saw a few things. But it's something your mother will teach you to cook. Mm. She teach you to clean. Mm. She teach you to do all those things. But yeah. she will say, "I have um, never teach you about sex, mm, which is the say, most important thing because I mean, you can teach me how to be a good person, but actually living as a good person is two different things. So you have to teach me how to live like a good person as much as being a good person. So I understand where you're coming from. So now it brings me to my next question. Do you think, not do you think, I know that people are very explorative towards sex. That's we love sex. People have sex on a daily basis. Some people even have sex five to six times a day and that is true. <laughs> But they would never talk about it. They're very explorative about it, but they can never, ever speak about it. So conservative about it. Why? Why do you think that is? Do you think it has to do with our culture? Or do you think it has to do with our religion? Because I try to think so. But I'm well-traveled. So I have been to a lot of places. And it's a still almost the same thing. So what do you think is the cause? Mm -hmm. I think we were raised to think sex is a taboo. Mm. It's something nobody talks about, nobody thinks about. It's just something you have to do in your private. It's your business. Keep quiet, do it, and just go. Mm. People need to... That's the way we're brought up. Especially in Africa, our culture. Mm. As I said, your mom will never, never... Has mm. your mom ever spoken to you about sex? Mm -mm. Never. They will mm -hmm. never talk about mm -hmm. it. So just find out on your own. Let me give you an example. I was talking to a group of women, and there was this older lady in the group and she was like why are you people talking about this and before she marries she'll read a book or two to give her information <laughs> and she'll start i said sex is something you learn for the rest of your life you have to improve it especially in your in a, a couple you have to improve it yes you yes, have to true. improve it so it's not just true. learning learning about it mm. in a book or two or our own mother's tales. It's just lie down and be there. It will be over soon. Okay. It will be over soon. So, our culture, one, we never discuss it. It's a taboo. It's, um... Do you want some water, please? Yes, please. I, we do have, um, okay, my, where I come from, they call it tambo, tombo. Okay. Tombo is, is just palm, palm wine, palm wine oh, juice. Okay, okay. Yes. Palm wine is it can be... Intoxicating. It's, so it's actually good for the sex talk. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Miriam, don't mind me. I, I love sex. I, and I know everybody sitting at home saying, Oh, she just said something controversial. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I love sex. I adore sex. And I think that I want to specifically be better at sex. I think that I want to be able to give as much as I, as, as I want to receive. And um, yes, and I, this is one of the opportunities that I have to learn. Sometimes I might not be able to, I'm so busy sometimes, I can't even go to a therapist's office. And sometimes, I, you know, as I two to three years ago, I never knew that we had sex therapists in Africa, not talking about Nigeria, alone. Mm -hmm. I got to meet a sex therapist and I was talking to her, not too closely, but I mean, it was like an event. Mm -hmm. So I now realize that this is actually a thing in Nigeria. And um, if you ask me, I want to be, the best sexiest person I can be. Yes, not anybody can be, but I can be. Yeah. You understand? So yes, I, I really do appreciate the fact that both what you do, it's 
it's important. It's important. It's really important. And um, I, for one, I, I believe that sex should be a topic. It shouldn't be a, a subject that is kicked to the background yeah. or that has a taboo or yeah, an abomination uh, zing towards it. I think it should be something that people actually sit down and discuss. I Fathers know. talk to Edu your son, son talk, um, mothers talk to your daughter because I feel like lack of sexual orientation actually produce irresponsible people. Because if I don't know so much about sex, I, I might just want to have so much sex with so many people just to understand what to it learn. is. Mm. Yeah, just to learn because mm. nobody is teaching me. And by the time I have had so much sex, I look back, my body count is 40. Mogwe, <laughs> you're not saying that you're a bad girl, you are this. It's just that we are not exposed to this kind of talk and it's, it's education. We need to learn it. So in that respect, do you think that sex education should be a thing in schools legally in nigeria africa and the whole world as at, at large what do you think about that well we have to be careful with that question okay because what are you giving the teachers that are responsible for this education mm. what do they know to give what are they going to mm -hmm. give your child okay what perspective are they coming from, from. let me give an example we did a, a group of teenagers and some teenagers were bold enough, and one raised his hand and he was like, Is oral sex a sin? Then one teacher got up and was like, No, it's a sin. Shut up. Sit down. I said, No. So if you give that kind of person the responsibility of teaching your child, mm. Mm. you may mm. teach your child rubbish. Rub something wrong. So I feel if there is sex education, it has to, there has to be a curriculum where that is agreed on mm. by both parents and the school that this is what we're going to teach. If not, it should be the responsibility of the parents. Of the parents. I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree because there are some um, educators who actually imply their religious belief on their student just because, oh, I'm Christian, so I have to teach a specific subject this way. Or, oh, I am Muslim, I have to speak um, teach a particular subject this way or because it goes against my religion and Buddhist, whatever it is, I think that uh, you're right. If sex education should be a thing in schools, we need to first of all be with non-religious fanatics who are teaching these things because I love oral sex and I think that's the best form of sex. That's one of the best form of sex. Uh, I'm one of those people who really don't have orgasms like, you know, once I, well, I must have sex and an orgasm must come. No, it's for me, it's a mind thing. I really have to be in tune with the spirit, soul and mind together. So if anyone is missing, that orgasm is not coming. For me, it's a mind thing, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. We are saying it again. I love sex and everybody loves sex and we should love sex okay we really should love sex so do you think okay i'm not gonna say do you think i i'll take myself for an example yes please i'll take myself for an example okay i when i was younger and trying to experiment on sex okay i was not vocal about it i came from a family where it was not as if it was a taboo to talk about it but i, I was this, my father was a single single parent so he didn't just, well, the thing was, he felt like uncomfortable. At the same time, I'm a man, how do I how go do I about do, yeah. this? Yeah. You understand? So I think all of that made him not to go, I know logically my father would have loved to teach us about sex. So I think all of that just, you know, puts him on a, and we grew up too fast. I, I, I for one, grew up too fast. I was a child, but I was an, I was an adult. I had responsibilities of an adult as a child, as a child. emotionally, um, um, physically, and even spiritually, you know, I had because I had to be everybody had to be a mother to my father. Everybody had to be a wife to my father because he was so loving of my mom that it it it, it just it just killed him, you know. So yeah, what was I saying? I think I, <laughs> I have to myself had to grow up. Yes, I had to grow up real fast. And your father yes. couldn't really teach me all about this. So yeah. in this in the course of finding sex, I realized that I I started off not being vocal, and uh, today I would be proud to say that I, I did not end up being not being vocal because if you turn my leg one side, it's not fitting me. I'll tell you, 
and that leg you're throwing, bring it back, slap someone like that or like this, you know? For me, that, that means I'm vocal now. But in the first part, you know, I, I'll probably want to actually tell you to do more. I mean, sometimes I like my nipples sucked really hard. Sometimes I like it sucked really soft, you know? I want to, to be able to Pass moderate, yeah, pass my message, but I just feel so shy to say it. I feel so, like, I feel like, oh, you know what, let me just allow this. Let me let him just do it. So at the same time, I'm not enjoying it. At the same time, I'm resenting the person afterward because I'm like, you're not even satisfying me. Meanwhile, the problem is me. I'm not even communicating to you. So what do you think is the reason why people don't communicate sex or how they love sex to their partners? Is it shame? Is it the fact that somebody told me that, oh, if I do too much, he goes, no, sir, I know too much. Ah! <laughs> and that's my, my former nanny. Mm. She was saying, I, I was, I was, we were talking about sex, because I love to talk about sex with people. I, I want to pick their hair, their brains, you know. I want to know about different culture and sex. So I was talking to my former nanny, not my present nanny, former nanny about this. She was like, you know what? Mm -mm. That if she does a lot of that, sometimes that she will do a lot of things that go, make her husband go crazy. And he'll say, no, where did you learn this from? So it becomes an attack. So that is why she refrains from telling him, you know, I want you to do this to me. Mm. What, what do you really think? As you said, this, <coughs> people are afraid of the stigma mm. of, oh, you are experienced. Yes. And we were discussing earlier, for younger women, what happened to you is you matured. Mm. You grew. Mm. You, you're more confident in yourself. You're confident in your body. You're, you are self-assured. So you can say exactly what you want. But for a younger woman, a lot of women, I won't say all, a lot of younger women are in it for the boyfriend to be happy. Mm. No. They don't want to make them upset. You have to be happy too. Mm. Mm. They don't want, he wants sex, okay. I don't want to upset him. I don't want to make him feel uh, this, that. And someone said earlier that a lot of them are doing it for the things they can get. Mm. Maybe a car, a phone, mm. a house, whatever it is. It may be that. But for me, I believe you grow older, you're more confident, you know exactly what you want. That's why they, they said the sexual peak of a woman is from her late 30s towards her 40s. Because one, she knows what she wants, she's very vocal, she communicates what her needs are. And for a, a person, a young man, the sexual peak is in his early 20s. So you can imagine how it's so off that 40 for women and 20 for men. So you just matured and you know exactly what you want. Okay. But another thing is, nobody discusses sex. sex. So how would you open your mouth and tell this guy, oh, I want it like this. Say, how do you want, where do you know, how do you, they start asking, start asking questions. questions. Yeah, but when you mature and you know exactly what you want, you know your body, you're confident in your body, you have, you're big, you're small, whatever it is, you love the, your body the way it is, you hmm. communicate. And it's not just communication, he has to comprehend. He has mm. to understand the message you're mm. passing. Mm. That's another thing. I have to be passing my message and the other person needs to be understanding the message. They're two different things. About. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you can just say, oh, I like it like this. Sometimes you even need to teach. Because not everybody knows everything. Forget the school of thought that says, oh, you know everything. I'm exploring with you. We've heard a story of a man that got married to a woman and she wanted to blow his mind. Mm. The night, wedding night, oh, she did all the antics she wanted to do. The next day he said, no, I don't think I can handle this. I'm going to divorce you. But he didn't talk the day before, the mm. night it was happening. But he said, no, he can't do it. He, she's too much for him. Oh wow. It's exposure and mindset. Oh wow. It's exposure. Because some people are always intimidated by a woman that's very confident in her body and she knows exactly. There's a bit of intimidation. Oh, okay. thank you. There's a wow. bit of intimidation for some men. They're not confident and that's it. Okay. Also brings me to another question about infidelity. Yeah? Mm, do you think that lack of sexual satisfaction between partners is actually promoting, mm, promotes infidelity i mean i know there's a saying men are dogs i, I don't believe that men are dogs men are dogs mm -hmm. i believe that there's some people who just behave like dogs and there's some good men yeah. okay and i also believe that there is no perfect man on earth and i also believe that there is no man who does not cheat 
it's just me, mm -hmm. okay? It's just me. I've seen all type of men, and trust me, that's my belief. Now, do you think that one of this prob one of the problems that actually causes infidelity between <coughs> men and women, because women cheat, I think women even cheat more than men, Charlie. I think so. But I mean, what causes more infidelity more? Is it lack of sexual satisfaction? Because I do know that there are some people who actually say, my husband has a tiny penis and doesn't know how to use it. Or my husband has a big penis and oh my god, he uses it too much. Okay. Or oh, oh, I prefer sex with my ex than I do with my present. Mm. So that's the reason why I'm stepping out. Is that even logical? Is that even a thing? Definitely. Does that really happen? That yeah, definitely. Infidelity can be a lot of things. It can be emotional, it can be physical. Can be financial, can be all all those kind of things. Oh wow! Did you try this? I will try. Uh, so fresh. This is actually um, <laughs> palm wine. It's a healthy. It's a super healthy drink. It's gotten f straight from the um, tree. I think they put something in and suckle it or something. I don't know how they do it, but they have time wine. palm wine tappers. They tap it and it's really amazing. After two or three days, it becomes fermented, which is alcohol. But for now, it is super good. And I I use it for breastfeeding. When I was breastfeeding to Hi. produce more milk, the fresh one, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry for cutting your shirt. <laughs> okay, about the infidelity. As I said, there's the physical reason, financial reason, mental reason. Sometimes you just don't connect with somebody. But yes, we've had cases of women, because they're not sexually satisfied, they tend to go back to their exes or go to someone else uh, or just mess around with other people but the whole idea is you need to know your 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 level of sexuality with the person you're going to be with I know it's hard it can be hard for people like from religious backgrounds and everything but you just need to know there's a compatibility women have cheated men have cheated men have cheated not because that one woman is satisfying them but because they just have options and women have cheated because they have options too as well so it's not yeah we can say yes because they're not sexually satisfied they go out but there are other reasons a lot of other reasons some can even be financial yeah okay yeah Mm. Some most can, popular one I think is financial, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. And some is because they are just not connecting with the person. You know, it it all starts in the mind before it goes to other places. So if you're not connecting mentally, mentally. with someone, as you said earlier, for you if it's not a complete package, you don't enjoy it. Okay. So many reasons, right? Okay, I want to ask my next question, but before I ask that, uh, some people may not understand what it is, okay? First of all, I want to ask, does lack of, uh, lack of orgasm, orgasm, the lack of orgasm, org mm. is it orgasm, or orgasm, right? Orgasm. <laughs> the lack of orgasm, does it cause irrational behaviors in both men and women? And why? Well, before I, I ask you that question, what is orgasm? I, I just know that it's the the climax. Yes, yes, the highest <laughs> for sex. <laughs> orgasm is usually, usually, but not everybody climaxes or orgasms at the end of the day. Yeah. But orgasm is usually the the end satisfaction you feel after having sex. It it's it's a lot of hormones and brains and your body and everything put together. You just climax and you just chill. That's what orgasm is. That's the whole purpose of pleasure in sex. So, orgasm is different from the regular coming. So, if I come now, it doesn't mean I have orgasm. That's orgasm is coming. But people, yeah. orgasm is coming. Is it? Orgasm is coming. Are you serious? Yes, orgasm. But coming on a different level because okay, orgasm what? is <laughs> let, let me understand. You know, you know, there's always a scale. <laughs> There's a scale. There can be the ones that is just okay, you know, you just it's okay. And there are the ones that are earth shattering that you're like, mm -hmm. what happened to me? <laughs> what is this? Uh -huh. So is a diff that's why some people you know have preference. This. If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know you know. That's one that will do your body like this. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> but I don't know. I I think there's a difference between orgasm and coming. Mm. <clears throat> orgasm is coming. Okay. It's just that maybe the scale of one to ten, maybe coming is two, it's just an okay one. Then orgasm is ten, but it's the same thing. Okay. And some people, there's even the definition of penetration orgasm and clitoral orgasm. Some people orgasm from their clitoris. Some different people, between masturbation and no, normal like maybe your partner stimulates your clitoris. Okay, okay. That's, can, I call that that's masturbation. When it's anything that has to do with touching, that's my brain just says it's masturbation. It's actually just so some some people, some doctors, they quantify it as they qualify it as clitoral orgasm, and there's penetration orgasm, okay. but they are all orgasm. Okay. Yes, there's some people that. It's a connection that you get the 10, as I said, the scale. And then some is just okay, you're like, okay, it's fine, but it's the same thing. Okay, so now, that, that being said now, yeah. so do you think that lack of orgasm causes irrational behaviors in your um, Yes, we've heard stories. We've heard yeah. a, I've, I have, there was a story of a woman that stabbed her husband. Because of she, because she's not coming? he had come. He had orgasm, she was not satisfied, and he was giving her attitude. She went in the kitchen, got a knife, and stabbed him. Okay, I, I think that's sexual frustration. And that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's sexual that's frustration. Mm -hmm. I think that's actually a legal term, even. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I watch a lot of uh, uh, criminal investigations, so I, mm -hmm. I'm acquainted with a lot of um, husband killing. Wow. But I feel like, you know, the frustration should only be at that second. Like, if and you come moment. out of me and I haven't come and I want you to come back and you don't want to come, I can stab you. But I mean, afterwards, why are you still thinking about You see, that's why sex, I say, it's powerful. It's, it's super, extensive. Super you powerful. need to educate yourself. Like, you yeah. leave that moment and you're still thinking about it. I also heard that people can actually pretend to be pregnant, hmm. like false pregnancy because, because of, of lack of. Orgasm. Orgasm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how true that is. I don't even know if it sounds very intelligent, but that, that's, what, that's what I heard. Well, people can be rational when they are not getting what they want. Yeah. And you know, it's a, a thin line between sanity and insanity. So it's possible. I know of stories of women that believe they are pregnant. They're physically not pregnant, but they're telling the world they're pregnant. Okay. But they're not physically pregnant, so it's all in the mind. Maybe it's a mental health issue that they're dealing with. Okay. Or they have yes, so much denial, they have, they've convinced themselves they are pregnant, while physically you are not pregnant. So it's possible to. There's a mental uh, health aware, um, problem there, obviously. Mm. For a woman to think she's pregnant because of she's not having satisfactory sex, it's possible. It's very okay. possible. The human mind is something we have not explored enough it's ridiculous so it's possible there's possible the irrational behavior it's possible the danger um, you want to murder someone you want to kill someone you want to go outside you've heard of stories of women that have babies and they kill the babies mm -hmm. they drown the babies or they put a pillow over their head because they're depressed so the human mind is just Amazing, we've it's not exploded it enough. Yeah, I, that, that's what I heard. We've, that not, we haven't even, we've, we've not exploded, exploded like one percent of so. I mean, if Americans have not exploded one percent of their brain, how much more than Africans? Because we don't even think. <laughs> well, we think we're actually. trying, <laughs> we're trying. It's not that bad. <laughs> we actually do think we're yeah. trying. Okay, thank you very much. I, I, I have learned a thing or two from today's episode, and okay. I really want to learn some more. Um, now that brings me to my next question it's about the perks of channeling your inner. God, sexual goddess. Okay. First of all, what is inner sexual goddess? What, what is that term? Let me just... Do we all have an inner sexual goddess? And if we do, how do I bring it out? How do I know her or him? If Is it a him in me or is it a high in me? Because I think that's what actually <laughs> makes people gay and not gay. I don't... You see, the, this, the brain, the brain is actually. We've not explored it. We've not. See the way I'm thinking. Exploring. It just might not be true, but I just want to hear. Okay, for when people talk about their inner goddess, it's just getting yourself. It's just being an absolute confident woman that you should be. You're confident in your body, in your sexuality. You've explored it. You know what you want. You know how to get it. 
you're even exercising those things that you need to do to improve it. Because mm. people don't even know there are exercises for women to, to improve for sex. Oh, wow, really? Even Kegels. A lot of women don't even know about Kegels. What is Kegels? Kegels is the exercise you use to strengthen the oh, muscles mm, in your vagina. Mm, mm, mm. And then like, two, like a band, rubber band or something. No, you don't have, even like for a woman when she's peeing. Oh, yeah, you can do it yourself. Oh. When you're sitting down, you just do it. You relax, you hold, you relax, you The hold. same way you guys hold your butthole. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you probably won't understand. I can't okay. really explain. <laughs> mm, okay, so. So, anyway, it's just finding yourself. Because, as you said, when you're younger, you're very unsure, you're insecure, you're not confident with your sexuality, but now you know. You're a tigress. You, you know what you want. Oh, bros, it's like this, so I, I really like it. And of course, you have to know the language. Sometimes you can't be just, eh, this way, mm. that way, up, down, no. Say things like, oh, I really enjoy it when well, you yeah. do this uh, to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's just finding who you are. Comes with age, comes with maturity, comes with confidence, your self esteem, and knowing exactly what you want mm -hmm. and how you want it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's powerful. Knowing what you want and going for it. It's, it's, it's amazing. So, um, Okay, I know that it's really nice, right? You like it? I yeah, it. I love it. I, I, I'm so loving it. Um, I do know that there's uh, this, this taboo, there's this thing on sex as a whole in Africa. Mm. That's fine. Um, now, that's for the singles, right? Yeah. And uh, now for the married people. Yes. Okay, now that it's super acceptable that it's for the married people and yeah. only married in, like, in quote, in the society, it's only married people who can actually talk about it or are free to talk about it. Which they don't. Which they don't. And, I mean, what, what I'm saying is, do you think that it is advisable for married people to have, just like they have marriage counseling? Yes. I mean, if you can train me to, to know how to be a good wife, why can't yeah. you train me to know how to be a good, bad sexual partner? Right? So do you think it is necessary, it is important, it is mandatory? It's essential. Essential, I think that's the word. It is essential because a lot of marriages are broken because of this problem. A lot of people go into it, they don't know exactly what they're... One lady that I'm working with, she, for her, she was even a virgin. She called me and said she needs to work. She, needs, she doesn't know anything at all. So you can imagine that kind of person, you send her into a marriage, say, oh, go mm. there and do what you need to do. It will not work, especially if the husband is experienced. Mm. Or if someone that is not patient enough to teach her, or patient enough. And for a first-time person, you know how it is, it's really difficult, of course, getting someone to see you in the mm. nude and all those kind of things. Yeah. There are always a, there are problems here and there. So yeah. it is essential. It should be part of the training, the marriage counseling. Mm. They should throw away their shame and talk about it. Yeah. Throw away shame. If yeah. it's whatever, is it a religious background, whatever it is, call women that will sit <clears> you down and ask you questions. Ask you questions because some people don't know anything. And a lot of people watch porn and porn is acting. Okay. Porn is a lot of acting. I think so, so they too. have, yeah, I they so have too. some acting, ideas right? in their head that it's Sex not should true. Be like it that. should be like this. Yeah, should I be think like that's this. one of our problems. It should we, be like we, that, but we, it is we, we essential. We think that sex should be the way it is on TV. It um. should. I went for one class once, and you'll be shocked. It was actually a pastor that took the class, but he's a medical doctor. And he said all the men should raise their hands and wiggle their fingers. And they all did. You say, okay, yes, that is... He said their fingers and their tongue. So they all were like, they were shocked. He's like, yes, that's what you do, use to stimulate your wife's clitoris. <laughs> The whole hall. People wanted to dig yeah. into the floor. That's a kind of joke I like but he to. was, he said, see, but let's that's not true. lie. That's this the is truth. a major problem yeah, in marriages. Yeah, in marriages, especially Christian. I don't know, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to say Christian. Religious homes as a whole. That's why we're losing our partners sometimes, occasionally. And that's why we're losing ourselves 
too. So it is very important that we learn about sex. So thank you very much, Mariam. You're welcome. Salmon. Be between. Talman. Talman. I know I was going to say Talman, but I want to say something. It's because we're eating fish. No, I was going to say something. I said, I want to say, I love your name. It sounds like Salmon, actually. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you for teaching us about sex. You're welcome. And thank you for encouraging people out there to talk more about sex. S E X sex. So please talk about sex with your children. Talk about sex with your con congregations. Talk about sex with your friends. I mean, you can talk about, you can have healthy conversations without indulging. So the, 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 the topic of sex does not have to lead you to the bedroom. You, you can have, have be yeah, you don't, yes, you don't have to have, have to be raunchy like she said. And you can also find if your mother is not doing it, your father is not talking to you about sex, you can find a sex educator. There are so many of them. The internet today is filled with a lot of people ready to help you. You can also contact Miss um, Mariam Talmon. I'll be leaving her contact at um, this thing. I for one want to go back because I want to be good at sex. I want, in a relationship, when I'm in a relationship, I love to give my all. And it has to be sexual, it has to be emotionally, it has to be physical and spiritual. I am an all involved kind of woman. So after today, I would want to improve my sex life because of course I want my man to be happy. I also want to be happy too because do you understand the kind of pleasure you get? Giving so much pleasure and getting so much pleasure given to you is unbeatable. So yes, that's the topic about sex. Thank you very much for watching Grab and Roll with King Tonto. I'll see you next episode. Stay tuned and do not go anywhere. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I love you. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, Miss uh, Talmud. I do have a little gift for you. It's a collection of different designers that I love. I've oh. collected over the years and I love so much. This you would appreciate. So thank you thank very you much so for being much. on the show. Of oh, Grab that's wow. so kind of you. Yes. So much. Thank yes. you. Did you enjoy the food though? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. Okay, all right. Thank you. It was delicious. Thank you. Absolutely thank you. delicious. Mm.